Uh, we want to continue solving trigonometric equations, and in this section we're going to look at trigonometric equations that contain multiple angles. Over here I've written on the board, suppose we want to solve sine 3 theta is equal to 1 half. Then 3 theta would be equal to 30 degrees. Um, that's the uh, uh, solution that's in quadrant number 1. Or theta would be equal to 150 degrees. That's the solution that's in quadrant number 2. So for sine sine 3 theta equal 1 half, 3 theta will be equal to 30 degrees, and then if I want all solutions, I'll add on integer multiples of 360 degrees. So all solutions would be 3 theta equal 30 degrees plus 360 de degrees times k, where k is an integer. Now, this gives me the solutions for 3 theta, but what I want is solutions for just theta. So I need to divide both sides of this equation by 3. When I do that, I have theta equals 30 divided by 3, plus 360k divided by 3, that gives me 10 degrees, that's this, plus 120 degrees times k. So here's all solutions for this value of theta that came from the reference angle in quadrant number 1. I do the same thing for the solution that's in quadrant number 2. 3 theta is 150 degrees, then I add on 360 degrees times k, this gives me all solutions for 3 theta. Divide both sides by 3, and I end up with 50 degrees plus 120 degrees times k. Now, if I was asked to find just the solutions that are between 0 and 360 degrees, what I would do is take k and substitute in 0. That would give me 10 degrees. Then I'd substitute in 1. That would give me 130 degrees. Substitute in 2. That would give me 240 plus 10, which would be 250. And I'd keep substituting in integer values of k until I went above 360. I'd do the same thing with this right down here, and I would end up with all solutions for theta that were between 0 and 360. So when I have multiple angles, the easiest way I think to do these problems is to first write down um, uh, expressions that give you all solutions, and then from, those, from that expression find the solutions that are between 0 and 360. In any case, let's look at our first problem. I have sine 2 theta equals square root 3 over 2. So the reference angle here for 2 theta, the reference angle is going to be 60 degrees. And I, now here I'm just looking for solutions between 0 and 360. So my reference angle is 60 degrees, and I have in quadrant number 1, theta is going to be equal to, whoops, 2 theta is going to be equal to 60 degrees, plus then I'm going to add on 360 degrees times k, where k is an integer, to give me all solutions for this one reference angle. And then in quadrant number, okay, so it's a sine theta, which is positive. That's also in quadrant number 2. So I'll get 2 theta is equal to a reference angle of 60 degrees in quadrant number 2 will be 120 degrees. Plus, now I'll add on that 360 degrees times k, where k is an integer. Dividing both sides of this equation by 2, I have theta is equal to 30 degrees plus 180 degrees times k. Dividing both sides of this by 2, I have theta is equal to 60 degrees plus 180 degrees times k. Now, I can take, if I want, different values of k. So, for instance, let's let k be equal to 0. Whoops, not theta, but k equal 0. Then theta is equal to 30 degrees. If I let k be equal to 1, then theta will be equal to 180 degrees plus 30 degrees, which will be 210 degrees. And if I was to let k be equal to 2, then 180 times 2 is 360 plus 30. I'll be above 360 degrees. So here's one solution between 0 and 360. Here's a second solution between 0 and 360. I'll do the same thing down here. Let's let k be equal to 0. Then theta is equal to 60 degrees plus 180 times 0, which is just 60 degrees. I'll let k be equal to 1. Theta is equal to 60 degrees plus 180 degrees times 1, which is 180 degrees, and that gives me 240 degrees. Now, if I let k be equal to 2, theta would be equal to 60 degrees plus 180 degrees times 2, which is 360 degrees plus 60, which is going to be above 360. So I don't have to worry about this value of k. So here's my 240 degrees, here's 60 degrees, and then 210 degrees and 30 degrees. So those are my four solutions to this equation between 0 and 360 degrees. 
and I found them by first writing expressions for all solutions and then substituting in values of k starting with k equals zero and going up to the value of k that puts me above 360 then I, then I know I've gone too far and I just back up and write down the solutions I have so far. Let's look at the next problem which involves tangent 2 theta. Tangent of 2 theta is equal to negative 1 so that implies that 2 theta is equal to 135 degrees plus, now the period for tangent theta is 180 degrees. So I have 180 degrees times k rather than 360 degrees. So remember, when we're working with a tangent theta, tangent's a periodic function with a period of 180 degrees. So I'll add that on. So I get my uh, uh, value of 2 theta that's in quadrant number 2 negative for tangent 2 theta equal negative 1. I could write down another one, 2 theta equal 315 degrees, except that 315 degrees is 180 degrees away from, 300, from 135, and I'm going to pick up that solution with multiples of 180. So with tangent theta, I only have to write down this 1. Now I'll divide both sides by 2. Theta is equal to half of 135 is 67.5 degrees plus 90 degrees times k. So here is uh, an expression for all solutions to this equation. Theta equals 67.5 plus 90 degrees times k. Now I want all solutions between 0 and 360, so I'm going to start out by letting k be equal to 0. Then theta is equal to 67.5 degrees plus 90 times 0, which is 0. Now I'll let k be equal to 1. Theta is equal to 67.5 degrees plus 90 degrees which will be 157.5 degrees when I add 90 and 67.5. Now I'm just going to keep going and as long as I get values of theta over here that are less than 360 degrees. So k is equal to 2, theta is equal to 67.5 degrees plus 2 times 90 which is 180 degrees and that's going to give me 247.5 degrees. k equal 3, Theta is equal to 67.5 degrees plus 3 times 90 degrees, which is 270 degrees. So if I take 270 and add on 67.5, I get 337.5 degrees. For k is equal to 4, theta will be equal to 67.5 degrees plus 4 times 90 degrees, which is 360 degrees, and there I've gone above 360 so I don't need to use my k equal 4. So I end up with these four solutions right here to this equation for uh, solutions where theta is between 0 and 360 degrees. So again, I write an expression for all solutions to the equation, then I substitute in values of k that will give me the solutions that are just between 0 and 360. I think this is the easiest way to solve these multiple angle problems. Here's our next one. It says find all degree solutions. So this should be pretty easy. Cosine theta is equal to 0. Remember cosine theta, I'm sorry, cosine 3 theta is equal to 0. Cosine looks like this. So there's 360 degrees. So that's 180. So over here is 90. And over here is 270. So 3 theta must be equal to 90 degrees plus 360 degrees times k. Or over here, 3 theta whoops, let me write this down a little farther here, 3 theta will be equal to 270 degrees plus 360 degrees times k. Now 3 theta is equal to this, I'll divide both sides by 3 and get my solutions. Theta equal 30 degrees plus 3 into 360 is 120 degrees times k. There's one set of solutions. Here I'll divide both sides by 3, theta is equal to 90 degrees plus I'll add, um, uh, I'll divide this by 3 and get 120 degrees times k. So there is a set of second solutions. So 30 degrees plus 120 degrees times k and 90 degrees plus 120 degrees times k. That's all solutions to this equation right here. Let's look at our next problem. Quadratic equation, 2 cosine squared, 2 theta plus 3 cosine 2 theta plus 1. So I want to solve this by... Um, Let's see if I can factor this. It's quadratic and cosine squared 2 theta, so I'll do 2 cosine squared, whoops, 2 cosine 
two theta and then cosine two theta. And then let's see, how about uh, one? I don't have any choice, one and one. Inside is one cosine two theta, outside is two cosine two theta. They add up to three cosine two theta. So plus and plus, I get two cosine two theta plus one equals zero. And I get cosine two theta plus one equals zero. I'll add negative one to both sides and divide by two. Cosine two theta is equal to negative one half. Here I'll add negative one to both sides. Cosine two theta is equal to negative one. Well, cosine two theta equal negative one means that two theta is equal to 180 degrees. And then I want to add on my 360 degrees times k. Divide both sides by two. And theta is equal to 90 degrees plus half of that is 180 degrees times k. So there's one solution, uh, one set of an infinite number of solutions to this. Now how about cosine 2 theta is equal to negative 1 half? So that means that 2 theta is going to be equal to, let's see, cosine is negative in uh, quadrants 2 and 3. The reference angle, if it's going to be 1 half, is 60 degrees. In quadrant 2, that gives me 120 plus 360 degrees times k, divide both sides by 2, theta is equal to 60 degrees plus 180 degrees times k. Now, that was in quadrant 2 for my reference angle. Now I'll go down to quadrant 3 for my reference angle. Uh, the reference angle is 60 degrees. In quadrant 3, that's going to give me 240 degrees. That's 180 plus 60 plus 360 degrees times k. So theta is equal to, divide by 2, 120 degrees plus 180 degrees times k. So I end up with this solution right here and this set of solutions right here. So quadratic equation with multiple angles, it's the same thing. I factor this if I can, set the factors equal to 0, write all solutions, and then for 2 theta in this case, then divide both sides of those by 2, and I get expressions for all solutions for just the angle theta. Let's go on now to the next problem. Here we have sine 2x equal 1 over square root 2. Now I want radian solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So sine 2x equals 1 over square root 2. So I'm going to have 2x equal to, let's see, that's 45 degrees. So I'll just say pi over 4 plus. Now I want to add on radian multiples of the period of this. So the period of sine theta is 2 pi. So it'll be 2. I'll write my k in front, pi. So 2x is equal to pi over 4 plus 2k pi. This is for my quadrant 1 uh, reference angle. Sine theta is also positive in quadrant 2. So I'm going to put down quadrant 2 reference angle. 2x is equal to, let's see, a reference angle of pi over 4 in quadrant number 2 is 3 pi over 4, or 3 fourths pi. And then I'll add on these multiples of 2 pi. I just write the k in the middle here because it's just a little easier to work with when I put the k in the middle. You can write 2 pi times k if you want, or 2 times k times pi. Okay, now I don't want to solve here for 2x. I want to solve for x, so I need to multiply both sides by 1 half. So first of all, I get x equals, multiplying both sides by 1 half, pi over 8 plus k times pi. And over here, multiply both sides by 1 half. x is equal to 3 pi over 8 plus k times pi. So there are my two sets of solutions right here for all solutions. And then what I want to do is substitute in values of k so that these solutions come out to be between 0 and 2 pi. So first of all, I'll start out with k is equal to 0. When k is equal to 0, I get x equal pi over 8. And over here, x equal 3 pi over 8. Now, I'll set k equal to 1. And I'll get pi over 8 plus pi. Well, pi is 8 pi over 8 plus 1 pi over 8 will be 9 pi over 8. And over here, when k is equal to 1, I have 3 pi over 8 plus pi. That's 3 pi over 8 plus 8 pi over 8. That's 11 pi over 8. Now, if I put in k is equal to 2, I'll have um, 2 times pi plus pi over 8. That will be bigger than 2 pi. 
down here is the same thing, 2 pi plus 3 pi over 8, that's bigger than 2 pi. So I don't have to go any farther than k is equal to 1. So here are my four solutions, pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 9 pi over 8, and 11 pi over 8. Let's look at our next example. Cosine 2x cosine x plus cosine 2x sine x is equal to 1 half. So in this case, um, looks like this to me looks like sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. So it looks like that expansion formula for the formula for the sine of a plus b. So I'm going to use that to write this as the sine of 2x plus x equal to 1 half. That is the sine of 3x equal to 1 half. So here I have sine, sine of 3x is equal to 1 half, so I've simplified this down to one of these nice simple um, equations here that involves a multiple angle. Next I would take 3x and set it equal to the reference angle. Uh, with sine, the sine of 3x is 1 half, so 3x is going to be equal to 30 degrees, or in this case we're using radians, so pi over 6, and then I look for the other one in quadrant 2. I won't finish the problem right here, but just leave it like this, because what I wanted to show you was that we use this formula for the sine of a plus b. Now let's go to our last problem. We want to find all radian solutions for sine squared 4x is equal to 1. Sine squared 4x is equal to 1, so I'm going to have to take, first of all, the square root of both sides of this. So when I do that, I get sine 4x is equal to plus or minus 1. So either positive 1 or negative 1. Now remember, my sine function looks like this. There's 360, or this is in radians, so I'll say 2 pi. This is pi, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. So 4x, if sine 4x is plus or minus 1, here's my positive 1 up here, negative 1 down here. I get positive 1 at pi over 2, and I get negative 1 at 3 pi over 2 for 4x. So 4x is equal to pi over 2 plus 2k pi, or 4x is equal to 3 pi over 2 plus 2k pi. Multiply both sides of this by 1 fourth, and I get x is equal to pi over 8, plus multiply this by 1 fourth, and I get k pi over 2. 1 fourth times 2 is going to be 1 half. So there's one set of solutions. Oops. Now multiply both sides here by 1 fourth, and I get x is equal to 3 pi over 8, plus k pi over 2. So there's my second set of solutions. So finding all solutions to this equation right here, I'd have to take the square root of both sides. That gives me plus or minus 1. I just graph my sine function real quick and notice that it's 1 when 4x is pi over 4, and it's uh, negative 1 when 4x is 3 pi over, whoops, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. As long as I add on these multiples of 2 pi right here, I'm sure that I will be able to get all solutions to these equations. So there is a look at solving some trigonometric equations that involve multiple angles.